Allow me to ask you this. Do you find these kinds of telescopes blasé, like old school or cumbersome? Do you wish you could take this and combine it with something that makes it easier to view and capture images of celestial objects like this that you can immediately post on your socials? Well, popular smart telescope maker Veyonis just might have the answer with something that looks a lot like a mini portable projector. Let's find out if this thing is actually bomber or bummer. So this projector looking device is called the Hestia and it serves more like an amplifier for your smartphone if it helps you understand things a little bit better. And how it works is you place the phone on top of the unit and it takes the image of a celestial object that you're capturing and runs it through some lenses inside specifically designed for this kind of use which means they hold an edge over even the best smartphone cameras out there and that image is then projected into the main camera on your phone and when used in tandem with the veonis app or your phone's camera app your phone display, in essence, serves as the viewfinder. The Veonis has their retails for $400 and it comes in only one single colorway like this. It's white with some black splashes on the side and it has an eclipse pack. And basically what that means is it just has a detachable solar lens, a tripod, as well as a carry case right here. The magnification for this thing between the phone and the device itself is 25 times through a triple lens group arrangement of six lenses together in here. The aperture, 30 mils, which pretty much relegates this telescope as a beginner level kit. The field of view, 1.8 degrees. The weight is 850 grams, or if you combine it with the case, that's 1.2 kilograms. And right now, in terms of uh, support for phones, only certain recent generation of iOS and Android phones are adaptable. Just so you know, this thing has no electronics whatsoever on board. That means there's no obsolescence, but that also means there's no onboard GPS or advanced lenses or sensors or whatever useful things that some of you might have gotten used to. As I mentioned before, the solar or eclipse lens, this thing is removable, removable on this threaded barrel on the uh, focusing ring right here. And this will also fit other 1.25 inch filters as well, in case you're wondering. The design of this is very similar to that of the Vespera 2, Vespera Pro, similar curves and all that. On the left side, are holes to attach the solar aimer. This is very rudimentary, but it works, I guess. The top is the ocular and this section is all magnetic. So this is where you basically place your phone and try to aim everything and attach it this way. I wish the magnets were a little bit stronger like neodymium because as it is, they do kind of shift quite easily. And also speaking of the magnet, if you mount this thing on a camera tracker mount, it's a good idea to rubber band this phone, the phone down because any higher or any kind of acute angle, your phone is gonna fall off. Uh, the tripod section has a nice pan and tilt fluid head, but you probably want to upgrade to a sturdier tripod at some point because the one that comes in the box is rather susceptible to micro jitters from wind and handling. I've been using the Hestia for a while now, and my thoughts are that like its peers, the Hestia is set up for beginners. There's no electronics, there's no AI nonsense to worry about. You can basically stuff it in your backpack or luggage and then take it anywhere you want. Except that it's not very beginner friendly. Oh, it's you. It's my counterpart, John Counterpoint. What's up? He thinks he's great at finding loopholes in whatever good thing I have to say. Well, yeah, because it's true. The Hestia isn't very beginner friendly, guys. Like for example, aligning a phone's camera to this thing's ocular, which honestly kind of looks like a foreskin, is like a game of cat and mouse. Plus, the whole alignment process using the app's green targeting circle on your phone against the projected image on this device is like playing pin the donkey tail upside down while you're drunk. And also, good luck if someone knocks the magnets in the middle of a once-in-a-lifetime viewing session, and then you have to start the whole setup process again. Nonetheless, this thing still beats out your love for old-school telescopes. I mean, come on. Most beginner telescopes that you can buy are refractor telescopes. And if you want to take pictures with your phone or your DSLR, you need an attachment that basically feels more like an afterthought. The Hestia, on the other hand, is refreshingly different in that it's very compact and that it prioritizes your phone as the camera and central interface. Well, that's assuming your phone fits the Hestia in the first place. I mean, while most phones are compatible, I call BS on the product page that says that the telescope will fit every future phone. 
I really think it depends. Like my Pixel 7 Pro worked fine, but the large circular camera hump on my OnePlus Open and OnePlus 11 clashed with the central rib right here. But for the rest of us with normal phones, once this thing is set up, it's so easy to observe and capture the sun or moon if you wanted to. And that's about it. Like more distant objects like planets, deep sky clusters or stars are basically pointless with the weak sauce 30 mil aperture. Because at this price range, we should be getting 100 mils or at least 50 mil aperture. So it's quite a letdown in this aspect. Aren't you tired of taking turns peering into a telescope and then with each excitable user, the chances of someone bumping into the eyepiece or the rest of the setup out of whack increases? Well, the Hestia has its image displayed on the phone so everyone in the vicinity can check it out without waiting around because, you know, we've all become impatient people with the attention span of a goldfish. Most of the time though, the Hestia will be in a primarily horizontal or roughly horizontal position, which in bright daylight especially renders the phone displays, even awesome outdoor rated ones like the Samsung S24 Ultra, hard to view. Let alone when you're trying to properly focus to snap a good photo of the sun for example. And nighttime could be better too. The Gravity app needs some kind of low vis mode because as it is, the white UI elements cause unhelpful glare. Oh, speaking of nighttime viewing though, it's so cool that the app gives you directional cues to find and lock onto your target object in the sky. Um, that's assuming you're using the Apple version of the app because Android users are so far SOL. We don't get any tracking guidance whatsoever, which almost completely blows the whole purpose of the Hestia as a beginner device in the first place, don't you think? All right, it is about to start in a few moments. The eclipse is actually starting its cycle right now. Um, and the sun is about to be blocked out by a passing black hole and because the tree line is so low i'm gonna have to move the hestia what oh it's not it's not a black hole i i thought it was it's the moon that's it oh piece of crap my bloody malaysian education So, as you probably gathered from the experiences of my two esteemed guest hosts, getting a Hestia really depends on your situation. You want something super easy and portable to use with your phone but is as bare bones as telescopes can get, then sure, the Hestia could do it. Android users, I would say, might want to wait for the guidance update, otherwise you're missing out on probably one of the best parts of the whole experience that iOS users already get. Also, I think if you're already an experienced or amateur astronomer who wants something fresh, something simpler, like no more peering into an eyepiece like, you know, a voyeur or something, or sitting in the comfort of your living room while a robot does all the work, then sure, give this a try. But that being said though, for the price, something like the compact $500 Seastar S50 or the $600 Dwarf 2 are way more capable. As long as, again, you don't mind having a robot do most of the work for you. Well, that's all I got today, guys. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for taking the time off just to watch this video. And also thanks to John and Greg for co-hosting this episode with me. Yes. And again, remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what, guys? The world needs it more than ever and it starts with you. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up this video, comment nicely down below. I love you all very much. Peace out and God bless. Whoosh.